Okay, so let's talk resonance. If you're following along with my series, I've mentioned resonance already. This video is just going to be a very quick introduction to resonance. And in the next video, we'll do an example problem that includes a resonance circuit. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on series resonance. And we'll leave parallel resonance for another video. So resonance occurs in a series circuit when the supply frequency causes the voltage across the inductor and the capacitor to be equal and therefore they become opposite in phase. Okay, so for me to explain that, let's just go more into what the formulas are for it. And then once you've got the formulas, you'll start to be able to understand what I mean. So let's look at first XC, which is for a capacitor, right? The equation for XC is one over two pi FC. So for us to find the reactance of a capacitor, reactance X, then we, we do one over two pi FC, okay? And for the reactance of an inductor, then we do 2 pi FL. So what we can see here is that frequency and capacitance and frequency and inductance, they have a relationship. Let's describe that relationship. Okay, so let's start with capacitance first, right? So as the supply frequency is increased, so imagine you had, for example, a 10 hertz supply and you increase it to 10 kilohertz. What happens to the capacitance of that circuit? So as you increase the supply frequency, the capacitance of that circuit goes down, right? And as you decrease supply frequency, the capacitance of that circuit goes up. So capacitance and frequency are inversely related. And you can see that from the equation. With inductance, it's the opposite, right? So as you increase frequency, frequency and inductance have a linear relationship. So as you increase supply frequency, then the inductance of a circuit increases. And as you decrease supply frequency, then the inductance of a circuit decreases. So what happens is eventually these two points, they actually meet and become equal. And then at this point, the imaginary term of impedance cancels out. I'll show you what I mean. So Z for impedance, right, is equal to R resistance plus J 2 pi F L minus one over two pi F C. This here is X L, right? Reactance of the inductor. And this here is X C, reactance of the capacitor. So when these two, right, when the difference between them, meaning that they both become equal. So you have, for example, let's say the inductance was a thousand and the capacitance was a thousand. Then they become equal. They cancel each other out. And what happens is this whole bracket here this whole thing here becomes zero. So what happens is you have the impedance of a circuit is equal to the impedance of a circuit is equal to R plus J zero. So what happens is the imaginary part of impedance is just completely gone and you're only left with impedance is equal to resistance. Sometimes that can be a good thing. Oftentimes it can be a very, very, very bad thing. So we'd say that this circuit now, it just exhibits resistive behavior only, and it has no net phase shift. The current and the voltage, they become completely in phase. And so to explain that, let's just draw a quick graph. So you've got reactants along, along this angle here, and along the bottom here, you've got frequency, okay? So reactance is obviously XL minus XC. So let's plot XL first. So as we said, as frequency increases, then inductance increases, okay? So they have a linear relationship, so that's easy to draw, okay? And that's XL. Now the opposite is true for capacitance or the, rea the capacitive reactance. As the capacitive reactance, as the frequency is increased, then the capacitive reactance decreases, right? XC. And so what happens is you get this midway point here, which we call resonance, which is when XL and XC become equal. And so they cancel each other out. And we call this point here FR, which stands for resonant frequency. And like I said, in the next video, we'll do an example problem using this. So let's just lastly cover the equation for resonant frequency. So we denote resonant frequency with FR. And then it's equal to one all over 2 pi, and then the square root of L and C. The only other thing I want to mention, which 
is very important and you'll see that in the example problem that we're going to cover so if you have a supply voltage here you've got a resistant resistor and inductor and a capacitor so what happens is when these two become equal and they cancel each other out the impedance becomes could be very low so for example if you had only a hundred ohm resistor here but let's say you was getting 5k total um, reactants from these two if these two cancel each other out so your impedance was 10,100 right so you got for example 10 volts over 10,100 so that's a 0 0.1 milliamp supply current right once these two cancel each other out you're only left with 100 ohms in terms of the whole circuit impedance so you've got 10 volts now divided by 100 ohms and so now you've got 100 milliamps of current so you've gone from 0 0.1 milliamps so less than 1 milliamp all the way up to 100 milliamps just that resonant frequency and so what, what's going to happen here now is you can now start to imagine the voltage drop across this inductor and this capacitor because they're still there they're just cancelling each other out, but they're still gonna they're still gonna create a voltage drop across them. So normally the voltage drop across it at a five k ohm um, impedance would be five volts dropped across it. At resonance, when you're talking about a hundred ohms only, but you're talking about hundred milliamps of current. Just made some more space so that you can see what I'm talking about. So for example, let's let's do it right. So now at resonance, you've got hundred milliamps of current coming out here, right? And you've only got a hundred ohm uh, resistor impeding that current, so the voltage drop across the five ohm inductor now is going to be V L is equal to five k times a hundred milliamps, which I mean calculate that you're talking about five hundred volts, and so let's do V C. V C is obviously five k times a hundred milliamps again. You're talking about 500 volts. So now you've got, and the thing is, so because it's an inductor, it's going to have a phase shift of 90 degrees, and the capacitor is going to have a phase shift of minus 90 degrees. So they're completely in anti phase of each other, but you're talking about 500 volts across the capacitor. If your capacitor is not capable of managing 500 volts, you've only got a 10 volt here supply. So you might think that, for example, you don't need to have a high voltage you don't need to have a high voltage rated capacitor because you're only dealing with a 10 volt supply but you're talking about at resonance you could get a 500 volt drop across this capacitor or inductor and so that's just a word of warning for resonance all right guys so that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one when we'll do an example problem there thanks